Good morning, money.net alive. I've got uh, Dave Bullock here from ARC Advisors. Dave and I were just talking a few seconds ago. Um, my thesis has been that there's a lot of money on the sideline, Dave. You, we've talked about this quite a bit now. Uh, you, do you agree there's a lot of money on the sidelines? And if if so, where where's where that money going to work? Well, I, I don't think it's been put to work. I, I do agree with you, Steve. I think that um, going in toward the end of the year, there was tax selling, the markets were thin, uh, people had to recognize their losses in a lot of the tech stocks. And, yep. um, you know, the valuation on the tech stocks is still a modest premium, but I still think those good franchises are, are places to go. So I think, <clears throat> heck, we're only on the 5th of uh, January right now. Right. I wouldn't get too anxious. Uh, you know, if you're a day trader, you can... <coughs> watch the volatility and move around some stocks, but there, I, I, I'm sure you saw the article in the Wall Street Journal saying that uh, a lot of families are pretty happy that their day trading kids are, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, are, are stopping. And, you know, my uh, son-in-law just made a quick two grand trading, uh, not trading, but uh, betting on the, the sports market. So I think that, some of the day trading people on the edge have gotten their heads chopped off and they're yep. um, not very happy with it. So I think that the market um, for some of those quick spin companies like GameStop and so forth uh, is, is going to be over for a period of time. I think it's going to be a wait and see. We don't yeah. see an IPO market uh, uh, right now. So there, there's nothing to... Uh, buy and dump um, uh, in, in the short term. So I, I'm looking at the longer term fundamentals and the things that uh, uh, bother me right now, you, you saw and correctly announced that uh, um, Mr. Putin has announced for the uh, Russian Orthodox mm -hmm. Christmas. Uh, I, I thought it was a truce that would be enduring, but it's a daily couple day thing. And um, I'm sure the guy is going to try and reposition his forces uh, during that. I, I, they've really gotten um, some significant losses on the battlefield in the last few weeks. But Dave, so you talk about the the Robin Hood we buller traders. Um, you know, the average account there we know is right around two hundred and seventy five dollars in Robin Hood. Um, that's not what I'm looking for. I, when I say the cash and the sidelines, I'm talking about more like the the the, so, the sovereign funds, right? Yeah, the so, Norway, the so, I mean, Saudi. You, you, I I don't really look at the day trader right model. I'm looking at the uh, international professional guys. Um, I I think I don't think some of them have come back from their ski holidays. Tell you the truth, and uh, we're we're still looking at. Uh, a gradual pickup in the volumes coming into the market and yeah. uh, the names and, and, and the professional market is still not convinced that uh, tech is the thing to buy just yet. I think they will be back. And uh, you could see that in the, in the trading pattern for Apple uh, in the last uh, period of time. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, Apple products are not very creative or very innovative right now, but uh, that's still a heck of a franchise. And same yeah, thing you, with and you heard today, uh, you heard uh, Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, says it's going to take a couple of years uh, in order for uh, this market to come back. I, I, you know, where else are you going to go, Steve? You know, you, you're going to hide in Europe, Europe. Uh, is still subject to the Ukrainian war and the energy uh, uh, volatility and uh, the lack of exports from Germany and autos to China. So um, I, I don't know, you can go into some of the commodity markets yep. right now, but the, the economic demand is not, not picking up. We, we have been watching that pretty carefully, the metals markets. Um, notably around gold um, yep. and our, our favorite long-term play, uh, which you probably don't even follow is uh, Iranian resources. And they've got a, uh, uh, it's AUIAF and 
uh, you, it's a penny stock. Um, but I think long term, three, four, four years down the road, it, they're going to make a fortune out of their gold mine in South America. And state. what about Cameco, like CCJ? Oh, I, I Cameco. Uh, I I've liked Cameco because uh, you probably have seen the announcement out of Germany that they're going to keep a couple of the um, nuclear plants still online, and France is still big in uh, in in nuclear. I think we're going to see that, and Cameco is one of the major. Uh, miners of uranium. And so we have a long position on Cameco, um, like that, uh, that company. Um, also, um, Wheat and Precious Metals, and um, uh, there are a couple others that... Uh, that so that... in the in the commodity space, you're saying your alternative energy, uranium plays, but not quite oil plays. Is that right? Well, I, I think that oil... Um, is really so subject to the supply and the demand phenomena right now. Yeah. And the supply is still pretty, pretty long. And I think the price cap that the Europeans were able to execute on Russia says that uh, the Russians are going to have to pump more oil in order to make their budget. Um, and they're selling it to the Indians and, and, and the Chinese. Uh, at the end of the day, the U.S. will export oil uh, more effectively than it has. But I, I don't see, <clears throat> because the economy is still, um, look at inflation in the economy. Look at the, the jobs look pretty good, but you're now starting to hear announcements from the auto manufacturers that they're not going to be able to sell as many cars as they did in uh, two years ago. And so- uh, that the two largest consumer expenditures are your house and, and, and your car and cars are lasting longer. And I don't think that the new car demand is going to hold up. I don't think real estate demand is going to hold up. You're starting to see uh, crash and burn in certain real estate markets. Yeah. It's often uh, 10, five, 10% in, in the pricing from the peak. So uh, inflation um, it, and, and the Fed are biting. You know, we, we joke about, and you joke about it, uh, the Fed should get real that, you know, that what they're doing uh, is having an impact. And so I, I truly believe the next meeting, they're going to go 50 basis points, if not, okay. I, I don't think they'll hit 75 this time, but they'll continue uh, to tighten it down and they will overshoot their mark and it will have an impact on consumer expenditures and uh, consumer confidence. And uh, for everybody in the market, uh, stay away. When, when the Fed chocks it up, you, you know, it's almost it's either almost immediate or it's the next day the markets will uh, chunk down. And yeah. uh, so I, I think you, you come to the cash on the sideline, the professionals are waiting uh, for uh, the Fed to make its move. And there's no great imperative to be a hero here to put money to work. What I asked this question of Creed earlier today, you know, what, and I, I almost wanted to start it, but uh, hashtag ignore the Fed. I mean, to me, I'm kind of ignoring them. I know that some people say ignore the Fed at your own peril. I get that uh, because they have such a big stake in how the economy is run in the amount of money that's pushed into the market and taken out of the market. Um, but it seems that down here uh, that the, the market's being defended here, no matter what the Fed says. I, you know, you know, you you, you talk about the, uh, the Fed and uh, what it's been doing and the other international central banks and what they've been doing with their capital. Um, the reality is uh, the market is a psychological beast. And uh, when, if the Fed raises interest rates, it's gonna have a, a, an impact short-term right. on the markets. And uh, I think you have to uh, buy or keep long into the Fed increase at your peril, and because it 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 could be another um, five hundred to a thousand uh, point downtick that happens in that. So uh, just square your positions uh, a couple days in advance of uh, the Fed, and 
watch. I mean, you might miss an uptick, but I think you're going to miss a downtick. My my strong sense. I'll bet a. Uh, I I would bet in the vicinity of down market after the Fed increases seventy percent uptick possibility thirty percent. And I think that's what what's influencing a lot of the professionals and the money on the sidelines. They're saying, why be a hero in here? Why I be mean, a I'm hero? Not- right. I could totally understand that. And I don't like being a hero myself. I mean, let, me, let me ask this question, uh, Dave. I, I've always been taught that the market itself in general is roughly six months ahead of itself, that we are when you invest a uh, long term, you're investing for at least six months out. Um it, does it seem that it's getting closer and tighter, like three months out? Does it seem like these these day traders are pushing the uh, the envelope a little tighter? I I, I would argue for the converse. Uh, okay, Steve. I I think uh, a lot of the professional money that's out there is longer term investment, and if you take the day trader uh, volume off the table, which is really not that big, small, yeah, it's very small, it, it, yeah, it's de minimis. But it's on on the margin for how the the market will react to some of the these news elements. So you take that away, you, you go, revert back to that Wall Street Journal article that those guys are starting to say, hey, you know, this isn't necessarily as much fun. I got my head chopped off a couple times last year, right. and you take that little froth out of the Robin Hood guys, which is not much, but it it influences. You know the the press is really very keen to watch some of these uh, uh, nose dives and rocket ships occur, and you know Tesla being one of them. Tesla has built an incredible franchise, and I've always been a naysayer for that. And it's still people that buy their cars say they're outstanding, and uh, and he's got some great battery technology. But it goes up and down, and Elon Musk is such a, a volatile manager. Uh, and what he's doing with Twitter and all these other things going on. At the end of the day, Steve, I think you take that marginal volume out and you look at what the professionals are doing and the professionals, I'm, I'm a trustee of a, a fund that is, uh, uh, we're looking at 25 year, 30 year investments, right? Right. And when when we, and yeah, we got, a, got chopped up last year, our portfolio is down 18%. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, hey, you know, we're not going to we're still picking long term winners. And I think the proportion coming out of that volume of day trading activity, although, you know, you look at some of the big banks, the numbers out of their equity trading and even their fixed income trading uh, performance last year was quite excellent. Yep. And they didn't make much out of the uh, IPO and the underwriting market because there was no new issue market uh, to speak of toward the end of the year. I think that uh, those traders are going to get very nice bonuses. The investment bankers are not. But long term, when the, the markets start to come down like they have, the private equity uh, market uh, starts to look look much more attractive. The valuations go down uh, in lockstep. And so uh, the proportion, I think, that uh, are trading in the short term will continue to be there from some of the investment banks and some of the uh, hedge funds will still be there. But the hedge fund performance on average was terrible last year. So the big endowments that have supported them are, are saying, gee, you know, really, should I do hedge funds? And where should I go for hedge funds? And the sector that's the most attractive is the global macro piece. It's not the um, US equity stock pickers. And global macro, I have one global macro guy that I follow has been a friend from Lehman Brothers. He was up 98% last year. (laughs) And uh, he is an incredible picker on currencies and bonds and um, international emerging markets and all sorts of exotic stuff. That guy, you know, he's truly the exception. He's truly in the less than 1% category. If I go uniformly across all the hedge funds that I track, um, they just got their heads clobbered last year. They did not perform. And so I think the professional guys, the um, large endowments, uh, 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 school endowments, the large yep. uh, sovereign wealth funds are 
you know, are we going to hide in, uh, uh, in, in, in hedge funds? Are we going to hide, continue to hide? And I think where they're, they're going to go is put money into private equity this year. That will be private equity. All thing. right. Uh, and they raised a lot of money in fundraising last year, but they're still sitting on the sidelines. So you watch the next leverage buyout that's been, that gets announced, whether it's by Carl Icahn or it's by somebody else, uh, will be actively supported and um, by those people. I think the banks uh, got chopped up on a couple transactions. And, and, and in thoughts of that, uh, you know, I bought Blackstone pretty heavily over the last few days, um, BX. Yeah, B that... BX. And uh, the other one is um, APO. APO. Okay. Yep. All right. I like that. Uh, which is, uh, who's that one? Uh, Blackstone APO. and yep, one that's is... Apollo uh, Global, okay. obviously. Yeah. Um, but, but Blackstone, we've been hiding in that one for a while because the yield on that has been extraordinary. Um, I don't know what it is today. I don't have my yield screen up in front of me, but- uh, They pay a nice 6.33% dividend. Yeah, you, you can't go wrong on, on, on that. And those guys are really smart at Blackstone. And KKR, they're really, really start smart. Would you also be looking at Carl. You said Carl Icon. That's IEP. Uh, would you be interested in buying that down down here? I I've never really been a a, a buyer of Carl because it's all about Carl. Uh, but I I think that BX has an, an institutional approach. I used to uh, the guy that uh, ran some of that. You know, they were all sort of ex Lehman Brothers guys and. Um, yep. They're, they're smart. They really are smart. And uh, there's some others that are out there that you can't buy into their portfolios. But uh, I, uh, PE is a good place to hide. The other thing that I've, you know, I, I just been, I don't know what's happened. I, I guess they go back into uh, meeting around noon today. You're, you're my Washington specialist. I don't know um, what's going to happen to McCarthy, but uh, it, they go back uh, at noon today, yeah, at noon Eastern. It, it, it's Park. such a sideshow, and it is embarrassing. I think we've got four political parties running right now. We've got the ultra left, which is uh, 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 DiCasio and all those other guys. Then we got sort of the mainstream Democrats. Then we got the mainstream Republicans, which you know you you don't hear anything more right now about where the Bush family is, but call them the, the Bush family ideologues. And then you get these uh, um, MAGA people on, on the right, the 20, 20 folks in Congress that are stymieing everything. And I, I think the only solution is McCarthy finally throws the, waves the white flag and decides he ain't going to get elected. And mm -hmm. then do they get a compromise guy? I don't think the people that they've run the flagpole yet <coughs> are the compromised people, but I don't know who's, who's the right candidate. You don't have uh, um, anybody in there to take up from McCarthy, but I think- And it McCarthy is amazing that 21 people can hold the whole United States uh, hostage like that. Oh, isn't it horrible? It, it, it is embarrassing as Biden has said. Um, and internationally, we're a laughing stock, but you know, we never get into, um, the politics where all these multi-party party, uh, situations are in Germany and the confederation. Well, let, me, let me ask this question then, Dave. Uh, is that affecting the markets at all that, the, that we are having? I think the markets are ignoring it. Mm -hmm. I, 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 if it goes longer than a, a couple more days, then I think the markets, it, it will uh, affect psychology for sure. And that's a forward indicator. If, if Washington is in such straits, they can't even seat the new uh, House members. Yeah, um, I mean, the Republicans screaming, you know, hey, uh, vote for me because I know how to run the government. And they can't even do the very basic thing that they need to do, which is form a government. <laughs> and then the Democrats are sitting back and not doing anything either. You know, it seems like well, the, last the Democrats thing. can't do anything because they don't have a majority. Um, but it also feels like over the last few years, the Democrats really didn't uh, take advantage of their position either. It seemed like they... They went far to the left as well. Well, I, I think that's right. You, uh, that's why I say the four parties that are that are yeah, there. I, I don't know what the equivalent is in the Democratic Party for the 20 
that are holding up McCarthy's approval. But uh, the problem that I think we have in governing this country is there's no strategic vision as to what we're trying to do. And Biden has tried to create that with his economic incentive plans, and he's had better than uh, when Trump was just sort of a random cannon. I, you know, he had all of his stuff going on on immigration, and then he had uh, the stuff going on on uh, uh, tariffs, and then he fought everybody, and nobody wanted to let him visit. <coughs> he damaged the credibility of the United States internationally by it. But, you know, the international, uh, the large countries are very, um, uh, how, how shall we say, the, the bureaucratic, they're run by bureaucrats, they're, you know, the Germans stay where they are. And uh, I was talking to a very good friend of mine, and um, he was saying, you know, the, the in Germany, they're not going to push back on the Russians. They've had too, too much history. When I used to do all the consulting with the large banks, the Germans and the Swiss quietly were supporting all the stuff that was happening in Russia and South Africa. And, you know, they were making a lot of money out of it and nobody really saw it. And the Russian and, and the Germans are continuing to do that. So when you, you come back and you say Washington is looking just as bureaucratic as some of those multi-party systems uh, in Europe, and they can't, they have not been able to make strategic coalitions and they don't know how to whack up the, uh, and they, I guess they can't, the, um, uh, cause it's under the control of the president, uh, the, the various offices uh, in the government, you can't say, okay, uh, if, if we make a deal with you, um, uh, MAGA guys, we're gonna give you treasury. Or if we make a deal with you guys, um, Casio and the, the ultra less, we're going to give you the social services administration. That doesn't happen. It's all controlled under the president. And so there is not as much horse trading that can happen in the US government model that happens in Germany or Norway or France or any of these other, or Italy. I mean, Italy is the, the case in point. They, they so will... with all this uh, uncertainty, you have to wonder why is probably why the dollar is up to 105 today, 105.25 here. Well, right? we're, I, I, I think it's because there's not a consolidated view around Europe. Europe is uh, the manufacturing model in from Germany is suspect right now because it's all predicated upon inexpensive energy. And with the price of energy, admittedly, uh, the natural gas situation, I think it was run off the flagpole at the start of the war. Oh, they're going to be short natural gas. They created a new import terminal in less than a year in Germany. And that import terminal will feed 6% of the German demand for energy. <coughs> so, and they've kept online as we sp spoke before, the nuclear plants, they've kept online a couple coal powered plants. Um, so it's not as dire as you would have seen six months ago. And we've now gone through a warm spell in the United States that uh, I don't know what the final natural gas numbers were today, but uh, the production is outstripping demand. And we have all of those uh, reservoirs in Germany are now filled back up. We had a, a draw of 221 billion cubic feet. We expected a draw of 228 billion. So pretty close. Yeah, but, that, uh, that's, you're right. Big draws. No, it, it, and so the, we're still producing. And I can tell you up here in Vermont, um, we're at 35, 40 degrees today. Normally this time of year, we're uh, below 10. Right. And so I'm not going to consume a lot of uh, gas uh, over the next few days. I, in fact, I've turned down my thermostat since my kids went. But put on the put on the jacket and you're good to go. Yeah, but I I, I think that the energy situation is influenced a lot on the margin by uh, the demand for gas. It's influenced a lot by the and the Russians are, <coughs> are still pumping, and the Saudis and the Middle East are still pumping. So we have a lot of uh, oil. Um, I think that the, the, there's a fade trade going that should be done on energy this year because I don't think they're going to make 
uh, as much because it's all a function of uh, the per barrel price. So my uh, issues, you know, top issues on my list still be are the Fed um, tech, which is cost cutting, and on the margin, it's not time to go into tech. Washington, I, I really, it, it's such an embarrassment. I, I think that the only solution there is McCarthy to, uh, to bow out gracefully. Uh, Ukraine, um, man, I, I think the Russians are, are, are really um, in a tailspin there. They don't, but now they're, now that they, the, the big thing is they have a cruiser that has ultrasonic plane uh, bomber or, or rockets on it that's now cruising the Atlantic. You know, they're, this, uh, I mean, this guy Putin's crazy, uh, but energy inflation, I think inflation will start to see it gradually come down and then we'll start to see. <clears throat> so I, I would, I, I'm sitting back and waiting. I put a little more risk on this morning uh, uh, for SPY and now I'm looking, looking like a doofus, but uh, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, well, you have to you have to think about like Apple is still green today, though, right? Uh, let me pull up my chart here, Stevie. Um, uh, where is my watch list? It got. Uh, yeah, we're showing yeah, Apple now a uh, flat on the day, but it's green on on a, ne a fairly negative day. Right. Um, I mean. You don't even see uh, the defense contractors rallying. RTX is down. Uh, XLE is up a little bit today. City, all the financials are still uh, in uh, in disarray. Uh, so I don't know where you. If I I I would, I think that some of the top top names in the uh, S and P are, are are getting chunked, but it's the mid tier where there's better value. I'll leave it at that. Mid tier is the better play for you. All right. I like that, Dave. But uh, you'll be good. And, All right. Uh, and we'll see you uh, next week. Next week. Bye.